five ways to naturally reduce cortisol levels Don't by hacking your brain and when trying to heal your cortisol five imbalance. proven ways to lower your the cortisol supplements levels. that i have used to help Six rebound tangible things it sounds like cortisol is the devil and we must avoid it at all costs or else we will die yeah that's obviously not true <laughs> In today's video, I simply want to explain to you what cortisol is. I've seen so much fear mongering over the last year about cortisol, how it negatively impacts our health. That is the one thing that is keeping us from achieving our goals. And I just wanna help you better understand zooming out and looking at how your body functions as a whole. So in today's video, we're gonna put on our critical thinking caps and we're gonna learn how to identify bullshit. Let's go. Okay, first and foremost, we need to understand what the heck cortisol is. Cortisol is a hormone that is produced by your body when you're under stress. When you're stressed, your pituitary gland at the base of your brain sends the signal to your adrenal glands and your adrenals react by releasing cortisol. Then as you become less stressed, the cortisol leaves your system. This is a completely normal bodily function. It would be more concerning if your body didn't function this way. It's the same thing as hunger. When you're hungry, your body releases a hormone hormone called ghrelin. And this sends the signal to your body, it's time to eat. When you eat and you're full, your body releases a hormone called leptin. This tells your body, it's time to stop eating. Again, these are normal responses in the body and should be happening. If they are not happening, we have a problem. Now, in some people, cortisol can be over or underproduced, and there are absolutely side effects to that. Excess cortisol can lead to weight gain, thin skin, acne, and even irregular menstruation. On the flip side, not enough cortisol can lead to extreme fatigue, nausea, weight loss, and muscle weakness. So here's where the good old snake oil salesmen come in. You've tried everything to lose weight and you can't. It must be your cortisol. Buy this product. Yeah, it's, it's not that simple and the body just doesn't work that way. If you suspect that you are producing too much cortisol day to day, here's what I want you to do. First and foremost, see if you can make some lifestyle adjustments. Look at your sleep, look at your nutrition, look at your alcohol intake, look at your stress day to day, look at your workout routine. Stress on the body comes in many forms. So by adjusting one of these factors in your life, you might actually be able to get your cortisol a little bit lower without Without needing to go see a medical professional. And that is step two, go see a medical professional. An influencer selling a greens powder is not a medical professional. I am not a medical professional. The medical professional you need to go see is an endocrinologist. That is somebody who is a doctor who specializes in hormones. And do you know what cortisol is? It's a hormone. The only thing that I am allowed to do within my scope of practice is suggest to you some lifestyle changes that might help, but also refer you out to an actual professional. The only thing that an influencer is allowed to do in their scope of practice is nothing. Okay, so now that we understand what cortisol is, why we need it, some red flags to look out for in terms of the marketing around it, let's look at a few videos and have a laugh. My top tips to get out of fight or flight and lower your cortisol levels. The signs or symptoms that you could be in fight or flight or have high cortisol. The three categories of things I'm going to talk about are supplements, lifestyle type practices, and then nutrition. Let's talk about supplements to start off with. If you haven't heard of adaptogens, they basically help our body adapt to stressors. Ashwagandha and holy basil are two herbs that are great for this. I use Body Bio Calm with almost all of my clients. Hard to get though, so comment or DM me if you want it. This one is Organic Olivia's Peace Juice. It's hard to get those. It's a supplement that she sells, probably an MLM. Gotta DM her. I don't know if it's an MLM. I'm not gonna do the research on it, but like this is a red flag to me. This person does not have your best interest at heart. They either want your money from an affiliate link, they are either part of an MLM with whatever that company is, or they just want your email address. Also, if you go to their profile, they literally have a parasite cleanse. I never made a video on that trend. Um, it, yeah. Let's go to the next video. Here are six tangible things you can start doing today to begin lowering your cortisol. Number one, exercise at least four times a week for 30 minutes. But it's important not to over-exercise by doing two plus hours seven days a week. Over-exercising can actually increase your cortisol levels. Number two is to limit your caffeine. I always recommend not going over 200 milligrams each day. Number three, have a bedtime routine that allows you to get seven to eight quality uninterrupted hours of sleep each night. Number four, practice some form of meditation or gratitude each day. This could be in a form of a 10 minute guided 
guided meditation. It could just be you simply sitting down, breathing, and focusing on your senses to get more into that parasympathetic mode. I also really like the technique box breathing. Number five, consume a diet that is high in protein and high in micronutrients, meaning fruits, vegetables, all the colors. This is going to better regulate your blood sugar and in turn help cortisol levels. And number six, consider taking a supplement such as ashwagandha, rhodiola, L-theanine, and holy basil extract, just to name a few. But what is most important is finding something that you feel is best for reducing your stress, which might look different for everybody. Maybe that's yoga, reading, journaling, taking walks outside, or just spending quality time with your people. The goal is not to try and remove all stress, that is gonna be near impossible, but rather remove the unnecessary stressors and learn to manage the unavoidable life stressors. Okay, so this is actually really good advice for like life in general. And this I think is what annoys me when something gets trending, right? Like cortisol, it's very trendy to talk about. It's like, we will take one normal thing and demonize it because some people have an issue with it. It's the same thing as like insulin and glucose levels. That's another very normal bodily function. If you eat carbohydrates, which turns into glucose, it's sugar. Once you eat it, your blood sugar levels will spike, but then your body will release insulin and bring it back down. Like it's it's normal, right? But we will demonize these things because they're trendy. And while this creator is giving really good advice as a whole, they're framing it under, well, all of these things are good for cortisol, but we're not really talking about how this affects the person as a whole whole. We're not really empowering anybody with real true knowledge. We're just using that fear of, oh, well, I have to do these things or else my cortisol will go up and I'll gain weight because that's what's really at the bottom of all of this marketing. If you can't lose weight right here and over here, you do not need to work out harder or do more sit-ups. The inability to lose weight in your stomach has much more to do with your stress levels and your cortisol levels than your exercise routine. Working out harder or high intensity workouts actually keep your body in the stress cycle because they send threat signals up to your brain. The middle two images are what hormonal belly and cortisol belly look like. To lose weight in your stomach, you need to release the stress and stored trauma out of your body first. I feel like the progression of that video was like, okay, maybe to like, mm, nah, girl, to like, wait, what? Okay, so she's not wrong about the intensity of our workouts. We kind of already talked about that. Like if you're doing super, super high intensity workouts all the time, that's gonna be just too much stress on your body. High intensity workouts are not bad. It just all comes down to moderation. And unfortunately, we have to unlearn a lot of that because in fitness classes and the way that fitness in general has been marketed to us for so long is that if you don't leave your workout destroyed, demolished, feeling like you got hit by a bus, then it wasn't worth it or it didn't work. So. I, I, I'll stand behind that part of her statement. Genetics are going to determine where and how you're storing your fat primarily. Now I will say that there is something to be said about the pressure system within your core canister, your diaphragm, TVA, your pelvic floor, and where you're able to hold and create tension. That's not what she's talking about. And we can discuss that in a, in a whole nother video in the future. Because then what it's leading up to is that your belly fat is stored trauma. What? <laughs> Again, we're just like way oversimplifying. Because yes, trauma can lead to stress. Stress can raise your cortisol. Excess cortisol can lead to weight gain. But we can't just go trauma equals weight gain. Like we can't jump all those middle steps. I don't know, it's also just giving like 2002, like inside every person is a skinny person. It's giving like, well, if you're fat, you were traumatized. And once you get over that trauma, you're gonna be skinny. Whew. Okay, that was a lot. There was some sass in there, there was some fun. And hopefully we feel more empowered to understand how to identify bullshit. If you have any questions about cortisol, if you have any questions about other hormones within the body, please let me know down in the comments below. But always remember that if you think that you have a hormonal imbalance, go to an endocrinologist. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and I will see you all in the next one.